Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again with, I can't really call this a repair video. I guess we could call this an installation or maybe even an upgrade video, uh, depending upon your, your perception of what I'm about to do. I've never really been 100% happy with the headlight output of the stock headlight output on my 2004 Element. Um, it just seems like a little, a little weak for me and, and I'd always wish to do something a little more. I thought about installing uh, a set of auxiliary lights on there, but I just haven't gotten around to that yet. But I was very happy when Motorfiend reached out to me and asked if I would be willing to do an installation video on one of their HID headlight kits. Motorfiend has several different kits to choose from, um, ranging from like really high, like 10,000 Kelvin, or I don't, I don't exactly remember, but you can go to their site, link in the description. But I chose the 8,000 Kelvin a blue kit and Kelvin is a is a measure of temperature and in this case light temperature So the, the higher that number the brighter they're going to be and just as long as we're on this topic Check your local laws and make sure that you're able to install a particular luminance in your vehicle if, if they have a threshold or they have laws concerning this type of thing or you know you go to get a vehicle inspection or something and you aren't able to pass inspection because of this because of the installation of said kit so just be sure to check your local laws to see what you can install uh, on your vehicle it would uh, be a real shame for you to go through all this uh, time trouble and expense only to find that uh, you're a target for law enforcement because you are uh, not in compliance with your vehicle so uh, keep keep that in mind today we're doing an 8000 kelvin blue kit onto my element and i've, I've taken those before shots of what it looks like now with the stock setup and we'll do some after to see to have ourselves a little comparison about how much brighter it is which i'm hoping it's a lot brighter all right let's first get a look at around at uh, what we're going to be up against here's the back of the headlights themselves and that's part of what we're going to be replacing from what i could see in the instructions it looked like we were going to use a lot of the stock um, stuff so we didn't have to like splice any wires or solder things in but it looks like we're going to need to uh, remove some stuff in order to gain access particularly here on the driver's side or left side of the vehicle yeah, they're kind enough to do that ah, you know what that may be all we need to do because there is quite a bit of room now that i've removed that let's go look at that kit all right here we have the kit pretty much as it showed up um, it comes with a an instruction sheet and now that I'm looking at this uh, here's something to note I have 9003 bulbs uh, stock in my setup and, and the reason I mention that is because that type of bulb has two filaments in it for the high and low beams so the high and low beams are all handled by the same bulb uh, if you have a, a headlight set up to where you have a separate high and low beam you're gonna it's gonna require a different kit or if you're like me and both uh, high and low beam are, are in one bulb, you're gonna need this particular kit. And as you can see, we've got a, a little bit of a different hookup as a result of that. Uh, the next thing we have in here is these are the bulbs themselves. Like I said, it's the 8,000 Kelvin kit. And then these are the, these are the bulbs themselves. Pretty cool. And we also have uh, some wiring harness stuff wiring harness connections looks like a relay and some fuses is there a relay in there yeah it's got some stuff in there and then lastly we have uh, those ballasts that i spoke of which will uh alter the voltage coming out of the uh the stock setup so that you're able to run these hid bulbs so it's it's more than just a bulb swap this is a, a little bit a little bit more involved but not so much that we can't uh we can't deal with it. Okay, step one of our installation says to install the, the bulb or bulb shield into the uh, headlight assembly. One of the first things I want to say is do not touch the bulb with your fingers. You touch the bulb with your fingers, you'll pretty much ruin it. So the, the oils from your fingers getting on these bulbs, bad thing. So do not touch these bulbs. But this is a two-piece assembly here. And you can see that there's a, a lock and an unlock. And if I twist it to the unlock position, I can remove the actual bulb assembly. And I'm left with the uh, part that actually goes into the headlight itself. I guess the first thing we're going to do is install this assembly into the headlight uh, assembly to see uh, to check our fit and see how things are going there. All right, here's our old headlight. So we're just going to unplug it. 
And then we can remove, there's this dust boot here. We can take off the back. Then these are always tricky. But there is a spring clip on the inside. I'll try to give you a better picture of that so you can see how this comes out. You want to push down on this and pull back and it unhooks and your bulb will virtually fall out. And I'm going to hang on to my old bulbs because, you know, they're not that old and they're still good. So I'm going to go set these aside. Okay, no matter what, this assembly has to go in here because this is what's going to be held in. And just put that in there like that and then just push down on my hook and we are installed once again. Now that I have the bulb protector installed on this side, I'm going to move to the other side and do the same thing. Moving the old bulb, I'm going to install the new bulb protector assembly. Now I'm going to remove my harness. It comes with some zip ties and some other fasteners down in there. I'm just going to leave those there for now. Let's see what we got here. Looks like we got a couple of grounds. These look like the uh, connections to the ballast. Yep, and then these are the connections to the headlight. And an inline fuse here. Looks like we have all the stuff we need. Looks like this only plugs into one side, which is interesting. I think what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to get this all mocked up before I actually fasten anything down. I'm going to get it all mocked up, see how it see how it works, and then after I get to that point, then I'll come back and uh, do a, the rest of the install and do a firm install, as I'll call it. One of the things I've got to think about while I'm in here is how everything's going to come together when it's all said and done. Um, but I need to, you know, figure out where I'm going to mount things and you might have seen me like move the hood prop down to see if it was going to interfere with this. In addition, I'm also going to have to figure out where to mount and put these ballasts because they are quite substantial. Um, and this actually might go further down there on the frame rail or it might just live like this. This, this might be a viable location for it. And I want to try to drill as few holes as possible in this metal because whenever you drill holes in metal like this, you, you take away the, the rust inhibiting properties of having the paint and everything on there. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mock all this up, get my grounds attached, and then plug everything in and try it and see if it works. If it does work, then I'm going to work on my... Uh, installation as far as where I'm going to mount things and everything else. And I have this other wire running over to the other side. And once again, I'm faced with the dilemma of trying to figure out where to ground things. And I'm going to try to use as many existing grounds as possible. So I'm thinking I might be able to run this, or in existing locations as possible. So I'm thinking I'm going to be able to run this ground right here, which would be darn convenient. And then it'll be a matter of, you know, tying up this harness and everything else. The uh, harness has two ground connections and uh, you need to find a good body ground to connect these uh, connections to. So there's one for each headlight. Um, I'm using this one up on the core support. It's convenient. There's already a bolt here and all I have to do is run it down. So just look for a good body ground and you can use existing bolts.
I should probably tell you that the red wire with the inline fuse that I'm hooking up to battery positive here is the power feed for the HID system. So uh, be sure to hook that up to uh, battery positive. Okay, here's what I've been fiddling around with uh, to give you a better idea. I've installed the bulbs and this is the connection to the headlights themselves. So it's just a, it's just a straight connector. Uh, this would normally plug into the back of the headlight and now plugs into uh, basically the harness for this relay assembly which controls both sides so you only have to plug in one side but anyway this is how things are are plugged in and they're pretty they're pretty straightforward because there's only one way to plug things in but there's these uh, bullet connectors and like I said, they're staggered so you're not really able to hook them up uh, incorrectly and then this connector here is configured in such a way to where it only plugs in one way. Of course you need to plug into your uh, ballast assembly here. Uh, over on the other side it's virtually the same thing. We have our ground connection here. Uh, we've plugged into our ballast assembly here and we have our headlight plugged in with these three connections. Uh, I'm not going to start the engine because obviously I don't want this harness to come in contact here. All I'm looking to do is to see if the system operates. Now if it doesn't, according to the instructions, you can actually change this connector around to the other side so you can flip this over and change the polarity going into here. Um, that may be something you need to do uh, if yours isn't working. So I'm gonna give this a shot, try my high and low beams, and see what we have. And if everything works, then it's gonna be a matter of mounting everything and cleaning up our wiring harness here so that it's not all over the place, and so we make it nice and pretty and professional. Okay, it's a moment of truth here. I gotta tell you, that is considerably brighter than before. I'm very excited. Let's uh, finish up this installation. All right, I'm very excited now. Now that I know that everything works as it should. So now we need to uh, clean up our installation. I mean, we've got wires that are just hanging everywhere and ballasts that are just flopping everywhere. And, you know, we need to clean this up. We need to make this look professional. Um, I think I'm going to start actually over here because there, there actually seems to be the most work to do. I'm going to mount my ballast, my relay and everything up here so it's easily accessible. Uh, also, this piece here, this, this upper part of this core support on my particular element, um, needs to be removed, say if you need to replace a radiator or something like that, um, or you need to get into the condenser or whatever for any reason. Um, so, in a way, I'm going to be able to remove this stuff. And it looks like with these brackets, conveniently enough, you have the ability to slide these in and out so you can mount the bracket and slide that guy in and out of there and it looks like some of this tape needs to come off um, I think that's just a protective coating that they put on there for shipping purposes to keep everything all nice nice and actually I, I also believe that they want you to install those stickers on the outside of here to indicate that it's a high voltage circuit so that anybody working on the vehicle other than you is aware that uh, they're dealing with high voltage because it can hurt you. It can hurt you pretty good. I think I'm going to mount this stuff in here probably just like this. Um, that way it doesn't interfere with too much. It's not in the way. I can uh, tie these wires up out of the way. And then as far as over here is concerned, I'm going to do something similar. I'll mount this relay assembly. Okay, uh, through the course of this video, I keep referring to this thing as a relay assembly. Uh, while I'm sitting here editing, I realize that it's quite possibly not a relay assembly and probably a better description would be to call it a control unit. So from here on out, ignore relay assembly and substitute control unit. Um, right about here, or maybe even over here, I'll mount the relay assembly over here and then mount the ballast. Well, it looks like it would be best to mount the ballast in this location in the relay assembly right next to it like that because now it's just now that you've got everything all hooked up it really is just a matter of uh, 
you know, finding a place for this for this stuff. You may not necessarily have this kind of room in your engine compartment. I am fortunate enough that I do. Uh, and as I said, you can only hook these up one way. And just as an added measure of safety while I'm working, I'm just gonna pull the fuse. This will uh, disable everything. Okay, before I get too crazy here, I need to, I'm gonna remove these bulbs, set it aside very carefully, but I'm gonna reinstall this rubber insulator back around the outside of this headlight assembly because otherwise, moisture and contaminants and all kinds of yucky badness can get in here. I don't want that. So I'm gonna see if I can work this around, this assembly. Yep, sure can. So you can push that in there just as if you had a bulb in there. And now I'll take my bulb, reinstall it. There. Now, that'll be all nice and sealed up. A little more difficult to show you this side, but there it is. All right, I just had a thought while I'm in here. Here's the main, like this is where I plugged into where the headlight, remember? This part would normally plug into the back of the headlight and we plug this into the assembly. I'm thinking, if this unplugs, for whatever reason, I'm sunk. So I'm gonna give it like an added measure of security, if you will. And I'm just gonna take this zip tie, run it up between these wires, and just This way, it's just like an added measure of precaution here. This, this will help lock this together so that it doesn't vibrate apart or anything. Because if it did, like I said, no headlights. And that would be, well, unfortunate to say the least. Okay, so if I mount this, say, here, it's gonna fit in there nicely. It's not going to bother it at all. So that's where I'm going to mount it. I'm going to mount it right there. And that leaves mounting my relay somewhere over here. As long as I've got it mounted down low, like, <laughs> sorry, I had a marker in my mouth. As long as, as long as I got it mounted down relatively low like this, I think it'll be just fine. It's not going to interfere with that at all. Now, see our wiring harness that we could drill into? We don't want to drill into it. So what I'll do is I'll temporarily move it down out of the way so that as I'm drilling, I don't drill into my harness and I'm just drilling through the metal. No big deal, you know? Now they provided me with some mounting hardware that I'm gonna to use to mount the ballast. Uh, but as far as the uh, relay assembly, uh, I believe I'm gonna use this self-tapping screw that I have uh, to mount that. That seems like a fairly straightforward thing to do here. So I'll be just drilling a straight hole for this one, but I'll be drilling a, a smaller hole over on this side just enough to get this self-tapping screw in there. All right, put your safety glasses on. I'll put mine on. I'm gonna drill the smaller hole first because I'm gonna use the same drill bit on both sides for this, but I'm only gonna use this drill bit once, so I'm gonna start with this one. Let's see if I got the right size. Ha, nailed it. I have to be careful though because I'm pointing this sharp pointy screw through this piece of metal and when this harness is back up in here it's going to be right up against Mr. Self-Tapping Screw with the sharp pointy end on it. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably see if I can find some kind of rubber something to maybe stick over the end of this. I think I might have like a vacuum piece of vacuum line or something like that that I can put on the end of this so that it doesn't rub through and chafe things like this. Whenever you're doing custom installations this is stuff that you gotta think about. 
I mean, if you just throw it together all willy-nilly, um, you could end up with an electric, electrical problem later on down the road because of something like this. So try to think ahead. Try to, try to look at how things are going together and work smart, you know? Check out what I found. This is like a brake bleeder cap. And once that's screwed down in there, I can just put that over the top of the screw and it just sort of holds it. Now, anybody that takes that out that's not me is gonna lose that and that'll be that, but I think that's a really simple solution that once I get this screwed in here, I can just take this and pop it up in there. In fact, why don't we do that now? Because we can install this. When I run this self-tapping screw through these, through this hole, basically I'm inviting rust. Now that I have bare metal here, I'm going to be inviting rust. The, the really smart thing to do is to take a little bit of touch-up paint and stick it on the inside of this bare metal, let it cure up. But like I said, I'm going to be running this self-tapping screw right down in there. I'm definitely going to do it over on this side uh, because I'm going to put a through bolt and a nut on this. But over here, uh, it's going to be a little more difficult. But just, I, I'm going to choose not to put it in here, but on your vehicle, if you really, really care and you, you want to try to avoid rust, I would take a little bit of uh, a little bit of touch-up paint, put it on there, let it cure up, and then install your fastener. And take my little rubber cap, install it on the back side of where the screw comes through. It's impossible to show that to you, but now I know that that screw is not going to rub through this harness when the when the time comes for me to put this back in here. Now I'm gonna drill these holes for the other fasteners. And for this, I'm gonna use this universal bit just cause they're easier. And here's something I should have showed you before is you can take a tool like this and actually aim your drill bit a lot better and get it started. Cause that's what this does. You just push down and it creates an indentation in the metal for your drill bit to get started in. That way when you start to drill bit, it doesn't start walking all over the place. Like that. <laughs> Let's go do the other side. Now this guy, we're gonna give a little bit more room to instead of having them so close over here because I'm gonna have to pour stuff into, this is, you can't really see it too well. This is the uh, radiator overflow. So I'm gonna be pouring coolant through here. So I'm gonna try to position this a little farther over this way. And I've got plenty of stretch on the wires and everything for every place that I need to be. But I think right there, a good place for my install. And just like on the other side, we want to avoid drilling into our harness. So I'm also going to move it out of the way while I do my drilling. I thought I had the uh, touch-up paint for this car, but I don't. All I got is some white here. So that's what I'm going to use, but you got to shake this forever. Coat that and uh, lock it down. I know it's a different color, but it's not a high visibility place. Guy I used to work with at the dealer used to install a lot of spoilers. He used to have to drill holes in trunks and he always did this. It's a good thing to do. I'll let that set up and we'll be able to complete our installation. In the meantime, I'm gonna do the other side. Suppose while we're waiting for that to set up, we could remove this blue stuff from the outside of this ballast assembly. I don't believe it really needs to be there. Do that to the other side. A 
Lovely. All right, while I'm waiting, I don't want everything on this side of the air conditioning hose. So I'm gonna unplug it all, and then plug it back in on the other side. And there's just three connections. There's this one here, and it's because of its shape, there's only one way to plug it in. And you have these other two connections, which are male and female, and the way they're, the way they're staggered out, you can only put them together one way, which is darn convenient. Now when we go and position our ballast, it'll be all ready to, to tie up out of the way. I think I'm going to tie it right here to this wiring harness to keep things nice and tidy. All right, I think I've given my paint enough time to dry, or at least cure up. I'm going to try to avoid like getting the, the wires or anything behind the bracket at this point. And I'm going to insert my bolt through the one side, and I'm going to have to come around through the back side with the nut. Just reach around through the back here get that nut started. I know, easier said than done, right? Actually, that wasn't too bad. I think I got it started. I don't like how that flops around like that. May be able to tie it up underneath somewhere. All right, here's the thought. See this little thing sticking up here off the cooling fan? I've got a zip tie here. I'm just going to run that zip tie down through and over the lower part of this fastener. That helps a lot. It's going to hold it in place. Now if I ever have to replace the radiator, I'm obviously going to have to replace this. But there's no interference with the fan. It's not so tight, it's, it's worrying me. Gonna do it on here and cut off the excess. So now when I slide this down in, it doesn't flop around nearly as much. I feel way better about that. Now that I know where my final assembly point is gonna be, I've unplugged this and this, and I'm gonna unplug these connections also so that I can route them out of the way. I want this to actually come in from behind along with this harness, which means I'm going to have to undo the ground again. This is going to make for a much cleaner installation. Now that we're done drilling, we can put our harness back. And that's what I'm going to zip tie my stuff to. I was also provided some zip ties. I had some of my own. Probably should have zip tied to the harness before I put it away, huh? You want it snug, but you don't want it so tight it actually can cut in and chafe things. Also make a neat cut off your excess. I want to be able to get to this, but I also don't want it to interfere with my access to my overflow. So I'm gonna tie this all down in it's like two places. Well, maybe just one. The idea is to make sure that it's clean, it's neat, and nothing's going to rub or chafe or cut through. Because if that happens, you're kind of dead in the water. Well, I think we're done with this side. Let's move over to the other. All right, well, I'm going to unplug my ballast. Because I want to make sure that when I install it, all my wires are free. I may end up doing a similar thing over here. Uh, in fact, I may tie it to this harness down here is what I may end up doing on this side. Once again, I'm going to tie down the bottom portion. I'll come back and show you after I'm done. It's just hard to have me and you in here competing for space. On this side I went down in here, I put a zip tie around this and held it to this uh, wiring harness. 
That way the lower part's secure and it won't flop around a whole bunch, which is the whole point of me making all this effort. Now let's get this all installed. My advice is to not nail the ground down until you're done getting all your stuff in place. Remember, firm, but you don't want it chafing. So you want to make sure that you got some movement here, but not too much. I guess it's an acquired skill. And that right there is going to want to bite you. It's looking good. Now we'll tie up the rest of our harness and uh, retest, reinstall our feelers, retest it, and call it done. Here's the rest of our harness. And there's plenty of it. So we can loop it around like so. When we tie it down this way, it's not loose within the engine compartment. And that's the whole point of tying this stuff down so you don't have wires that are loose that could potentially get entangled with moving parts, which means you got no headlights or some other vital system. Okay, I'll reinstall my fuse. There's our harness, that's the way it's all tied up. It's all secure. Wires are routed in such a way to where nothing's gonna interfere with anything. We've got our relay assembly here, we've got our fuse here, which is easily accessible, and if I really wanted to, I could probably well, zip tie that down that location that way if I ever have issue with uh, blown fuse which I'm gonna put an extra one of these in my glove box just in case because if that goes out both headlights go out that's that's kind of the the rub with this thing since it's only plugged into one side if your fuse goes then you lose both headlights whereas with the stock system it's set up for a fuse for each headlight um, I'm also going to just for safety purposes you know carefully box up my old bulbs and put those in the uh, glove box that way should I ever have a problem and I'm on the road and I can't fix it right then and there I'll have those uh, bulbs as a backup because all I'll have to do is unplug things and plug things back in that's that's all I'm gonna have to to con be concerned with so I'll have everything to switch back to the regular bulbs should I have an issue and it's nice that it's not obtrusive is that you know I can just unplug this put my bulbs back in and that's that and I can leave everything else as far as what I've just installed intact I, I really like that that ability one of the best parts is, is none of my installation interferes with my hood prop rod so when the hood's closed nothing's gonna rub nothing's gonna chafe it's all as it should be I love it can't forget this guy. Awesome. Seriously, it's like day and night. Now it looks like my driver's side could come down a little bit, so I might do a little bit of an adjustment on that uh, real quick. But as far as the way this looks, as compared to the way it used to look, to me there's no comparison. I mean, I think this definitely solves my uh, headlight issues with this vehicle. So very, very pleased with the results. Awesome. I'd say it's looking awesome. Special thanks to my uh, friends at Motorfeen for hooking me up with this uh, HID kit, this 8000 Kelvin kit that I installed on my 2004 Element today. Uh, I'm going to put links in the description to uh, not only this kit that I used in this video, but also to Motorfeen's uh, website so that you can uh, peruse and browse uh, the kits for your very own self. I would say that this is an easy installation. I mean, think about it. I just drilled three holes. Now, it did take some time to route things and get things placed correctly and all that stuff, but you know, all in all, as far as installations go, I'd say this is a pretty straightforward installation. I hope my little tips such as, you know, putting a little touch-up paint on the inside of a freshly drilled hole, you know, the way you route things, and also laying everything out ahead of time and getting it all hooked up, making sure it works, 
uh, just sort of blocking it out where you roughly want it to be placed before you actually you know, fasten things down. I hope those tips help you uh, in this installation. Now obviously this is gonna vary from vehicle to vehicle depending upon how much space you have under the hood to work with, all of that stuff you're gonna have to deal with, but still, I feel this is probably like a three or a four out of a scale of one to 10 as far as difficulty goes in installing one of these HID kits. So if you're like me and you wanted a little bit better headlights or you, you wanted something a little brighter while you're driving down the road at night, perhaps an HID kit is, uh, is the solution for you. And once again, special thanks to my friends over at Motorfeed for, for hooking me up with this kit because I really like it. If you have automotive questions, I would ask that you head over to ericthecarguy.com. Type in a couple of keywords to the search function up at the top of the page. I mean, stuff like brakes don't work or car bad won't start, stuff like that. And uh, it's, it'll come through our database and possibly get you an answer to your question right then and there. But if that's not the case, feel free to sign up for our forum. It's absolutely free. All you need is an email address. Just be sure to respond to the confirmation email that you should get uh, after you complete your registration. In order to complete your registration, you're gonna need to do that. If you can't find it, check your spam folder, bulk folder, firewall, ask your mom. Uh, if you wish to connect with me socially, uh, you can do that on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter under Eric the Car Guy, all one word. And I close each of my videos with a be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. I'll see you, like in the dark, if I'm driving up on you now. Uh-huh.